Okay, I wanted to show you here just a small Phillips. There it is. It just snaps off. This is the skim unit here, right there. And then it's got two arm that comes out there and runs up towards the key. And then over here you can see the black circle around the key. That's what reads the chip in the key. If you take that skim unit out, you're going to have that big gap there. And I don't want to do that, so I'm going to leave it in. I'm just going to come over here, push the tab down, and unplug it. Now the damn thing is disabled. There's nothing hooked to it. So shove that back out of the way and leave it in there. And now the skim has been completely disabled and it cannot be reactivated unless you plug this back in, put the key in the ignition, and turn the switch. Then the skim will talk to the computer, it'll recode the computer. And then you're locked into the whatever key you've got. So, as long as I own this vehicle, it's staying unplugged. It's not getting put back into operation. So putting this back together is the reverse. The clamshell just snaps back together. Run the little felt screwdriver screw in, and uh, that's done. So, let me get that button back up, and I'll show you around front what I'm doing. I'll be right back. Okay, what we've got here. It's PCM out of a uh, 2002 uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited. Um, I'm down to just one ignition key. And the dealership wants to rip me off for several hundred dollars to um, cut and program a new key. Um, Jeeps you have to have two keys to program a, an, an, another key and I've only got the one so well, kinda limited now there's a place in Florida right here all computer resources Homestead Florida all computer resources Homestead Florida call those good folks tell them what you've got vehicle they're gonna ask you a few questions and you can mail your PCM to them. And uh, the day they get it, it's early in the day, they hook it up to their system, and they go in and they turn the skim, S-K-I-M, they turn the skim off. And uh, either the same day or the next day, they ship it back out to you. All for, I think, uh, $150 was the grand total on it. Now when you get it back, you need to mount it back in, but before you mount it back in, you need to be sure and go uh, into the steering column and either completely remove or at least unplug uh, that skim. Because if you leave it plugged in, the computer will look for the skim and the skim will talk to the computer and then it'll code to the key. We don't want that to happen. And then uh, when this vehicle does start the first time, the computer will look for the skim and it won't find it. And then on the dash, it'll give you the little yellow symbol with the key in it with a circle with a slash, meaning it's not finding what it's looking for. And just ignore that. I'll probably go so far as to just pop that uh, dash cluster out and pull the little yellow LED off that symbol so I don't have to look at it on the on the cluster gauge so then you can go you can go to any hardware store or anywhere and get and get uh, keys made you know for a few bucks and uh, they'll work just fine they'll work just fine what I'm going to do is I got to get this bolted back up to its holding bracket now the factory used these godforsaken Torx screws and there's three of them one two three 
and two out of the three stripped trying to get them out because they were they were seized in there so um what i ended up doing was just grinding the head heads off the stripped ones and like i said the third one over here it came out and um i drilled the screws out and then i'm just going to use uh hex heads this bolts this to this and then this bolts to the firewall just like that it's not rocket science by any means okay as I said uh, Torx heads evil nasty go away uh, rummage through my uh, one of my bins of uh, bolts and whatnot and I found I found some uh, quarter by 28 that'll work so that's what I'm going to put in there but I do need to make these holes just a little bit bigger and on the, uh, the bracket itself so let me get these drilled out My donor bolts are just a little bit longer than what I need, but they'll suffice. If they don't, if they're still in the way, well, take the Dremel and we'll buzz them off. We will make them shorter. I think just to be on the safe side just a little kiss of uh, blue Loctite Zip these on there real quick. Remember, this is not a lug nut, so there's no reason to try to go retard tight on it. Snug them, and then walk away and let the Loctite do its job. And that's that.
Okay. Computer's all fastened up to the bracket. And it's ready to go back in. Now this, the two upper ears here, go to these two studs. And then this post goes through a hole over here on the fender. Well, and then uh, you put the nut from underneath on. Get that off. Harnesses pulled back out of the way some. Yes, it's as easy as that. These are all 10 millimeter nuts. And remember, start them all before you tighten any. Again, just snug them up. There's absolutely no excuse to bear down on them like a lug nut. It's not going anywhere. So those are in. Now it's just a matter of hooking the electrical plugs all back up. But I will tell you that I'm pretty uh, anal <laughs> about videotaping everything I'm doing as I'm doing it. And then um, labeling things so that they go back where they belong. And this is no different. My plugs. Me, this was easy. The way this vehicle is oriented in my shop, the east plug, the center plug, the west plug. That was the easiest for me. Okay, the ground wire that was held in down here with uh, one of those stupid inverted torques. Uh, the torques was in the trash, and I replaced that with uh, <laughs> just a uh, a nut and a bolt out of my hoard and I smeared it up good with dielectric grease and put the ground there so that's the grounds happy new home now let's move on to getting the rest of this put back together let me get this camera set up and we'll get to work okay let's get these harnesses put back together um, 
I marked them. So I know which one goes where, even though they're color coordinated. And these together. Give them a pull, make sure they're all on good and tight. To German spec, good and tight. And uh, that little job is done. Okay. Let's get this reservoir tank in. It's just held in with two 10 mil screws here. This is not rocket science. <laughs> just bobs in. Now you can see this tab here it goes over a plastic tab in the fender well down there. we can't get that done correctly okay, it's slipped on Bolts are in. Simple, simple job. Okay, that wraps it all up for this. PCM replacement. Um, don't be afraid to do this. It's not that difficult of a job. Now, granted, mine was a little easier because I had stuff out of the way because I'm re replacing the engine, but the principles are still the same. So, watch some videos and uh, have some faith in yourself. Give it a shot. Um, that should be your plan. And remember, if the plan doesn't work, change the plan. But don't change your goal. Work towards being more self-sufficient, saving yourself a lot of money. Don't give the money to the dealerships. They got enough. Um, take care, folks, and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.